the launch for the event in Saudi Arabia, the Day of Reckoning. That's what it's called. The Game Changer. Frank talked about the Ingano Tyson Fury fight. Oh, just hear myself back on YouTube. Sorry. So the Game Changer. Now the Day of Reckoning. Well, I'm going to change it and call it the Day of Recognizing. And I'm going to explain why to you and why I call it <laughs> Day of Recognizing. Oh, wow. Stay right there. I'll be right back. Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BW Team Sports. We are talking boxing. Yeah, we're talking about that event that happened yesterday to open up or to present the December 23rd showdowns in Saudi Arabia during the red season. And uh yeah, I I just flicked through. I was actually in the middle, I was gonna start a meeting and I flicked through huge. And I'm seeing Day of Reckoning one, and I'm seeing people said to me Wilder was in London. I thought, nah, they just they just joking. We weren't serious. I'm seeing Wilder, Joshua, Wallin, Parker, uh, Miller, Dubois. I'm like, what? Nah, this meeting has to stop right. Now, so the meeting got called off. I went in the other room. <laughs> I have never laughed so much at a press conference. Never, never, ever. Never, ever have I laughed so much at a press conference. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because Frank Warren, Frankie boy, I'm proud of you, my son. Frankie boy. <laughs> it was what it was great watching rival promoters and be made to look. And then the picture, yeah, that picture I put up on my screen. That picture. <laughs> Frank is at the front of the picture. Frank at the front. Front of the picture. Yeah, and you know who's at the back. Frank went, <sighs> like Terence Crawford did to, I can't remember what he does, who, who he did it to. He went, it was a Mexican guy, did it to at the, uh, I think at the presser, not the presser, at the way, and he went, <sighs> and Frank, did his Hulk Hogan was like, yeah, yeah, I'm the man. I'm running this. <laughs> Joshua Wilder in the same room. Hearn Warren in the same room. Wilder standing next to Anthony Joshua. Under the greatest promoter of our time, Eddie Hearn, he couldn't get those two together. Sorry, they didn't want to get them together. But Frankie Boy and His Excellency brought them together. And I, I I am just, you know, you know when somebody just comes in like a schoolmaster and says, yeah, hey, enough of this schoolboy rubbish. You boys, because you've got a little bit of money in your hand, you feel like you can carry a certain weight. He says, well, you've got money. You're rich. I'm wealthy. You're going to come in this room together. You're going to sit your asses down and you're going to respect one another. That's where real, say money talks. That's where real money talks. That's where real money talks. And it was just, refreshing. people use the word refreshing in boxing and it's overrated. This was refreshing because you had Warren and Hearn sit themselves down. But Frank was the boy in charge. 
He was the man in charge. He was the man in charge. Dev Sani, I'm proud of Dev. I mean, seen him on the mic and it just looked like a TNT show, to be quite honest, with Eddie Hearn on it. And I just loved it. I loved it. I love Miller coming out and saying what we have to say. I love Joshua being rattled. Good. It's nice. You know, you do press conferences and you don't give back in press conferences. In this press conference, you had to give back. I'm glad. I'm happy. You got mad. Good. You showed some emotion. Good. That's what you want to see. Deontay Wilder. As far as I'm concerned, the way I'm seeing Deontay Wilder, don't be too scary. You're scaring too many people off. You need to build new relationships with people. Do you understand? So just calm all that stuff down. They seem to me, and I know the media have already been on Wilder's back. We all know why we don't have to go there, but it's just nice to see Wilder kind of chilling. But I hope that that chilling and that, that demeanor that he has now doesn't compensate for anything inside the ring. I don't think it will. Um, okay, so a few things. Before I get into the big ones, I'm going to come back about Herkovich. Herkovich is fighting who? Mark Demore, a guy that David Hay blasted out how many years ago? Mark Demore. Mark Demore. Mark Demore. Herkovich. I told you, Herkovich is a useless piece of crap. I've said it already. I've told you about Herkovich. He's not good. He's not good. He's not old. And what they're doing is being very careful of Herkovich and just waiting. And that you can't call Demore a tick over fight. That is not a tick over fight. As soon as uh, Herkovich hits him, he's going to fall over. That's it. That's not a fight. Uh, really excited to see uh, Lyndon Arthur in there with Bivol. It's good. Uh, not so sure about Zorro against, uh, I compare them, forget the guy's name again, Opie. Let's just say Opie, guys. That boy, that guy's a monster. That guy's the real deal. I'd like to see how he would fare. I think he's cruiserweight, maybe a bridge of weight, and whether he would actually step up to become a heavyweight would be interesting to see. Um, I can see why, was it the midnight train? Uh, Richard Reactpool would avoid him, but I'd love to see him and Richard Reactpool fight. I think he's, I think he's, uh, I think Richard Reactpool's a good fighter. I've always rated him. I thought he was the best cruiserweight in the world, but I may just have to take that step back a bit after seeing this Australian guy because he looks like the real deal. And obviously, he's fought, fought uh, Marius Breedus. I think that Reactpool needs to fight Breedus. I think so. Whatever fight he's got now, I think he needs to fight Breedus afterwards. Anyway, that's the other point. Jerome Miller, du, uh, Daniel Dubois. Du, Jerome Miller is going to destroy Daniel Dubois. You heard it here. Jerome Miller is going to destroy Daniel Dubois. Dubois, du, Dubois has got Dubois a boy, and Dubois a uh, uh, Dubois a boy, and Miller's a man. And uh, that's just Miller's just got a guy in there and let his hands go. I just don't think that Daniel Dubois has what it takes when he's confronted. And I believe as soon as he gets confronted and he gets hit with the chin, he'll be looking for the canvas again. So that fight is, a, for me, is a foregone conclusion unless Miller walks onto something stupid. Um, but even if he does walk in something stupid, I still think he can take it. No, Dubois gets knocked out inside four rounds. Inside four rounds, I think the hands are going to go and Dubois will be looking for the canvas. So I don't, I don't, I don't see it. who we got here. Let's see who we've got here. Uh, Tosh Brennan's home, Junior Malone. Hi, Ingram. Hope you're well. Yeah, I think I recognize you from somewhere. You're old school, right? I'm sure you are. Mr. Brook, it says, uh, Matt Mudoff versus Caballero. That's a good fight. That's a good fight. Because I don't rate Matt Mudoff. I just don't. But what the hell's has Caballero been doing? And uh, Frank Sanchez, Junior Farb. Good fight. Good, good fight. Frank called it a Christmas cracker. Dev did good job. Yeah. I Listen, listen. I've always rated Frank Warren. I've always put Frank Warren ahead of Eddie Hearn. Always, 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 always. Here we go again. What a way to end 2023. 
What a way to stamp your face and your name in that outfit. AJ had cranky pants on. Yeah, well, AJ wasn't having things his own way. And I'm glad of it. For too long, Eddie and AJ have had their own way. They've had their own way. And I'm glad because, you know, they couldn't control the press conference. They couldn't control the questions being asked to AJ up front. AJ, you're in the best shape of your life. Yeah, I am. AJ, you've trained really hard for this one, aren't you? Yeah. AJ, um, you've got in a new trainer now, and I can see he's making a difference in your career. Yeah. I was good. I was glad. I didn't have to watch AJ looking in the, like this with headphones on. His headphones were off, and he was listening to what Miller had to say. And that had to be done. So happy. Delighted. I love Jarrell Miller. Do you, do, you, do you know, I looked at Jarrell Miller and thought, Riddick Bow. Jarrell Miller is 2024's or 2023's version of Riddick Bow. Not so much the skill set, but the personality. Because you know Riddick Bow in this era would have been would have been comedy gold one. It would have been it would have been social media fantastic. Riddick Big Daddy Bow. So Big Daddy Bow in this era is Jerome Miller. Jerome Miller. That's why I see it. Been a subscriber for years. Love the lives. Thank you so much. It's good to see you on. Really appreciate it. Wada looked like he'd been in a few splits in the back room. Like him, though. Uh, I think Wada's just enjoying and soaking it all up. I think for years he's been shouting and screaming and realised that wasn't going to work. And he doesn't like Eddie Hearn. I can understand why. Um, yes, he doesn't have to deal with that rubbish anymore. He doesn't have to deal with it. So eventually he can get his hands on Joshua. You know? And... You know, some things start to make more sense. Why was Joshua locked in a dark room for four days? He was locked in a dark room for four days because he knew he was going to have to come to face-to-face -face with two people. Jarrell Miller. Now, three people. Wallin, Jarrell Miller, <laughs> and Deontay Wilder. I'd go into a dark room. A dark room if I had to go and do those things. So so the reason why he had to come face-to-face -face with a few things. And I still don't think he's come face-to-face -face and to have to deal with, you know. But then you look at... The side, if I'm Anthony Joshua and I look at Deontay Wilder and you look at them standing side by side by one another, Joshua is a complete unit. Joshua should just be walking. It's not like how Tyson Fury is built against Wilder. If you look at the way Joshua looked over Wilder, he looked like another, he like, Joshua looked like a super heavyweight and Wilder looked like a heavyweight. Joshua looked physically imposing. And I'm fighting to myself. Why the hell is Wada expected to beat Joshua? And if you look at the, if you put him next to one, are you thinking? And if 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 Fury is able to back up Wilder and overpower him with all that muscle and all that size that Joshua's got, you think to yourself, stick the double jab on him, get right into Wilder. You've got a great chance of beating Wilder. Just looking at the size of them, but we know the mental shortcomings of the uh, of 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 the anthony joshua uh, and I, I don't know if he can pull up that same aggressive talking like he was talking to wally or he's talking to helenius or he's talking to dominic uh brazil if he can pull up that same aggressive intent against wilder because if he can't he'll lose the fight outside the ring before he gets inside the ring AJ let talk a bear smoke to him, and AJ hardly said anything back. Did AJ not le le learn not to how to talk smoke up in Watford? But AJ had beer talk for Usyk after that fight. Kiss my teeth. <laughs> you better shut up. Shut your mouth, man. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth before I come over there and do something to you. Shut your mouth. Watching Louis Theroux's interview, AJ seems burnout and fed up with boxing. I don't know what to think about that one. It's easy to feel burnt out and fed up when you know that Wilder's around the corner. 
Jay fought a heavyweight in C uh, Sydney, Australia. Stood six feet away from him and watched Jay up close. Okay. How does he look at heavyweight? Is he is that because I I'm looking at him what he's doing and how he's moving. Let me see him at Bridge Weight first, because you know obviously the heavyweight division is 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 super heavyweight in my in my eyes today. Change my name due to the love of the Celtic. If you if you mind, right? I was Tosh, yeah, Bear Girls, yes. Then Tosh Lugu, but then moved on and Brendan is back. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do for you if you like. I'll do a season of FC24. If you like, and you can be dedicated to the show, I'll do FC24 dedicated to Celtic Football Club. And I will go and manage Celtic Football Club for a season. How does that sound to you? Danny Dubois is in big trouble. Yeah, of course he is. Miller, test positive again. Substitute who, Fury? Uh, yeah. There's always a possibility they'll do that to Miller. Always a possibility. Because I think I didn't, I actually think that Miller was uh was uh moved out of the way. Let's put it this way. Why does Parker be interesting? Parker got those boxing skills. I do. I really do believe Parker's got a real life shot at Wilder. If he doesn't decide to stand at the end and stand and look at Wilder like this, he's fine. If he stands and looks at Wilder like this for five seconds, his fight is over. I'm really surprised he's fighting Walling. Tough, tough fight, in my opinion. Well, not really. It's a good, it's a good get out clause to not fight Wilder. <laughs> Come on, the hoops. Yeah. Why not? So, I still can't believe they bring Mark Demore. Of all the heavyweights you could bring in the world, Mark Demore. Mark Demore. Even if Dubois was on something, I don't think he beat Milan. I mean that. Nah, can't beat Miller. He can't, he can't beat Miller. Can't beat Miller. No chance, no way. Hold on. Hold on a second. Sorry for that. So I had a knock at the door. Uh, yeah, 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 I mean, that's what I said. That I think this is the end of an era or potentially the end of an era. You have Wallin. You have Mahmoudov. You have Herkovic. You have uh, that guy with the big head. Mahmoudov, I think it is. So that's four guys there already. If you want to put Parker in that mix, that's five. You've got Frank Sanchez. And you've got, yeah, Frank Sanchez as well. So that's six fighters you've got there. Junior fast seven. If, whichever way you mix it up. What I'm saying is this. You have a lot of young fighters there. And you've got a few older fighters there. Like you've got Wilder. I think the last fight he had was 20, 2022, if I'm correct. So if Wilder were to get beat in the Middle East, or Saudi, if he gets beat in Saudi Arabia, if AJ gets beat in Saudi Arabia, then you've got Parker. And then you look at Fury and Usyk. Those dudes ain't going to be around much longer. So then we're looking at a new, a new era of heavyweight boxing. So... Boxing fans have got hope and pray that Wilder and Joshua get through their fights. One of the two are going to get beat. Sorry. One of the two are getting beat. Uh, the only way, the only way the two guys get through to make that fight happen is if it goes to points and they give the decision to Joshua and Wilder. 
It's 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 that simple. Joshua and Wilder, because we want to see that fight. If the fight goes to points for any of those two guys, they'll get pushed through. Even if they're getting the shit beaten out of them, they'll get pushed through. They'll get pushed through. And then, therefore, we get the Joshua and Wilder fight. Because we saw that with the Ngannou fight with Tyson Fury. An elbow and a knockdown. No, Fury didn't win that fight. If we're being honest. The Middle East is moving boxing back to put, put on these fights because they have the insane money to do it. I'm glad the prime to boxing on the evening and not 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning anymore. That That is another thing. That's a, that's a brilliant as well. Prime time for us in the UK or us in, in, in West African time. That's brilliant. Moses, you rate him, Ingram? No. Absolutely not. I don't rate Moses at all. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't rate that dude. I don't. The only thing that people keep keep putting around him is his age and Mike Tyson. No, dude. No, dude. No, no. He he is a he's a decent heavyweight. If he wins, he won't win no world title. I don't think he'll win a world title. Sorry, no, no. It's that that like that Azim guy. He just no, 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 no. But if anyone's going to steady his career, he's with the right people. With Frank Warren, if he decides to Italma, yeah, most of the time, if he decides to leave Frank Warren and go to Matchroom, so he better stay with Frank Warren. He better not go anywhere else. That card is not only good, but I think it cleans out the rest of the heavyweight division. Out of that dust will come the next crop of top guys. There you go. That's it. I call this the flush. I call this the flush, not the reckoning. The only reckoning was happening was the recognizing that Frank Warren is a G. <laughs> is Uncle James still with Don and DD? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. He looks like a man, 18, 19, to be fair. Not the biggest, but the big men days are coming to an end. Mm, you think so? You think so? You've got Mahmoudov, you've got Herkovic. You've got, you've got, we still have got Zile Zhang floating around as well. Same boat as you. Yeah, I don't rate that gear. I don't rate it. And he talks like a superstar. That's like, no, no dude, no dude. No, you got you got to beat some. You, two things have got to happen. You got to beat a dude that I respect. It's gonna punch you back in your mouth. And two, you got to when the guy punches you back in your mouth, you can punch back. That those are the two things I need to see from you, Atal Moses Atalman. Until I see them two things, dude. That I rate Fabio Wardley. I rate Fabio Wardley because you know what? These are the two things I like about Fabio Wardley. When he gets hit on the chin, yeah, he can fire back. He can hit you with something. I've been saying about Fabio Wardy for ages. Way back when he got first got stunned. I couldn't remember what fight it was. He knocked the guy out. I thought, uh-huh. That dude there. Like, that dude's dangerous, that Fabio Wardy. He's dangerous. He's dangerous. Uh, but I still think you've got to manoeuvre Fabio Wardy in a certain way. Because you look at the, um, the broadcast, majority of the dudes that were coming on that... Uh, and being interviewed as heavyweights, they were all oversized. They were all much bigger than Wardley. So I think Wardley is a gem, but they got to maneuver him carefully. The kingdom, not that far from Africa. I I expect to see the ing on deck for the night. I can dream, can't I? I want to be in Saudi Arabia. That 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 is something that I intend to want to do. And just but I want to know, I need to do more background checking on, on other things as well. Not just the money, but I need to see other things as well. You know, I'd I love to be out there uh, showing what I can do as a coach and the stuff I've done. I would love the opportunity to be coaching a team out in Saudi Arabia, a nice club side in Saudi Arabia in a nice competition. That'd be great. 
These shows are all the dream fights together. One day if AJ Wilder win, they will fight on the Usyk Fury undercard, possibly. FA Jagba, yeah, we still haven't forgot about FA Jagba as well. FA Jagba, let's not forget FA Jagba. Yeah, even even FA Jagba, Herkovich, good fight. At least Big Ed's taking a decent fight in uh, uh, Kabaya. At least he's fighting Kabaya. I mean, flipping Herkovich is fighting Demore. How can people even respect Herkovich for taking Demore? Don't tell me oh, yeah, he was the only heavyweight that was available. That, that's absolute BS. The matter of heavyweights there across America, hungry and waiting for an opportunity in the gym. That would love to be on that event. Demore. Come on, man. Demore. Um, yeah, as for Otto Volley, yeah. Everyone says it's a tough, tough fight. But that fight is only a tough fight if Volley once. He can beat Joshua, but whether he's willing to go there to beat Joshua, that's the thing. We all could say you've got the ability and you've got the know-how. It's that if he's willing to beat Anthony Joshua, bear in mind the amount of money that Joshua versus Wilder will make would be insane. Wallin versus Wilder does not make the same amount of money. People want to see Wilder versus Joshua. So is Wallin just there for the payday? Because think about it for a second. If he upsets Joshua, first of all, why would you stick Joshua in the ring with Wallin in the first place? Why didn't you just put Joshua in the ring with flipping Mark Demore? Huh? Why don't you put him in the ring with Mark Demore? Or Kabaya? Why don't you put Joshua in with Kabaya? And let Wallin fight Mark Demore. Why? Why would you put Josh in a ring with Wallin? And if Wallin takes that opportunity, and there's no dodgy stuff going on, because I always think about the next fight. They want to make Joshua versus Wilder. So unless Wallin is, because when they talked about it, he had a big smile on his face. So there's money. And there's money. And they've got money, money. Not matchroom money. Money, money. Yeah? You know? The sort of money that they could go to the toilet and money's coming out of their ass and flush it and not worry about it. The same money we would use to build a house. The same money we would have to buy the, the latest car. They're, they're flushing down the toilet. See, if you understand that kind of money, uh, I I don't know if we're going to get the fights we think we're going to get based on the money. There's a plan. And these people, maybe I'm thinking too much about this, but with these people have got so much money. We've seen Fury versus Ingarnon already. And that was the first major fight out there. And that happened. And Garner should have won that fight. So you're going to tell me Otto Volin, unless he knocks out Joshua, is going to get a decision on points. Big phrase. The four kids say, yeah, I rate phrase. I rate him. I rate Fraser Clark. He's got, Fraser Clark's got something about him. He's got, I, I think he gets caught too much defensively. I think he gets caught too much to the right hand. And I just feel one day somebody's going to discombobulate him with a right hand, like to the temple. He might be doing something and just boom, and his legs just go. That's what I see about Fraser Clark. But he's a good fighter. Technically, he can, he can go to the body, go to the head, use, use the jab. He's got all the fundamentals there. He, I, I've got more faith in him be having a version of the heavyweight world championship than uh, Moses. Uh, than Moses, sorry. Sorry. I, I I rate big phrase. I do. One in rank number two by the IBF. If AJ beats him, he'll probably fight Urkovich for the IBF title when it becomes vacant after Usyk versus Fury. Okay. Yeah, that, that all sounds... That sen sounds sensible. Sounds sensible. If he beats... If 
he beats. And I say a big if because of the money. In a previous video, they're trying to freeze Wilder out. Who is responsible and why? Well, there are two people I think they're frozen at the heavyweight division. Deontay Wilder and Jerrell Miller. Two guys. Two guys. And they do have a common denominator there, if you notice. Um, if you look at Miller, when he was talking about stuff about AJ and talk about what AJ was doing and, and revealing all stuff about AJ in the press conference, Jerome Miller went off script. Jerome Miller wasn't going to come, have a fight, maybe get knocked out, go home. Jerome Miller didn't do that. Jerome Miller started talking about some stuff that was affecting people's pockets and money. When you start to do that, You'll get frozen out. Ah, oh, he's a drug cheat. Okay, he's a drug cheat. Well, are you tell me something. He's a drug cheat, but Povetkin wasn't a drug cheat and went and fought on pay-per-view cards. Luis Ortiz was a drug cheat. Still got to fought for the heavyweight championship of the world. Jarrell Miller got caught the same amount of times as Povetkin, but never. But 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 it was Miller that got banged to rights and got sent away. Why? Povetkin wasn't opening his mouth talking about this person on drugs and that person on drugs. Or, or, or performance enhancing, or, or the other guy, Luis Ortiz, wasn't doing that. But Jerome Miller was. As for Deontay Wilder, another outspoken heavyweight who talked about the slave contract. So there's certain things that Wilder would not get himself entangled with. Hence why a deal could, I don't think, could be done between Joshua and Wilder. Uh, the new way of ducking it is one. Is one to price himself out the way it doesn't appear like a duck to other summer people? It goes, it goes, Asia says, Wild, Wilder messed up his own career, though, did he? How do you know that for a fact? How do you know that as a fact? It's easy to say things, but it's easy to say things, but unless you know the hardcore facts, I'm just putting one and one together. Uh, the same way Malinachi man mentioned the prevalence of diuretics and PEDs in boxing, yeah, you don't see. You don't see Paulie Malinaggi around anymore, do you? Why wasn't Fruzy Fury frozen out? He was a drug cheat too. Why wasn't Provetkin frozen out as well? He was a drug cheat too. You've got to understand the heavyweight picture and heavyweight history. Heavyweight history will answer that question for you. It may have something to do with, uh, as Muhammad Ali would say, the right complexion, the right connection. I, I'm just saying, because the things that Tyson Fury would get away with, there are other heavyweights that could never get away with it. And we know that. That's the media for you. AJ knows Otto from amateurs is inspiring and probably thinks he has his number. Huh? Okay. Okay. Off topic. What is your prediction for Secure Stevenson versus Dos Santos fight, fight tonight? I'll tell you something. <laughs> if Dos Santos can stick it on him. If the Santos can stick it on him, like Stevenson was in sparring, and who was it, that sparring partner, put it on Stevenson and beat Stevenson up. If that guy can put it on Stevenson, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about the Santos. I haven't even looked at the Santos. Wonder what slave contract Wilder was talking about. He was offered 100 million for the zone. Ah, uh, you know that uh, Joshua signed a lifetime contract you do know he signed that, right? Wilder never had a big payday. He never had a big payday. Are you sure? Are you sure? Wilder's never had a big payday. Are you as an accountant? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Funny, the safe slave contract that was around back in the day. When Eddie and Barry Hearn turned around and said, back in the day, you, you just call a person by their first name and you sign them into a contract. But he said, like, now you have to call them sir. Yes. From the reports. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, you, you believe that stuff. <laughs> you believe that. Listen, you know how a man, when a man's got money and a man ain't got money. Wilder. 
Well, I'm sure Wilder's got plenty of money in the bank. I have no doubt about it. And good investments too. Sanchez, has the Cuban skills set plus a big dog in him? I rate him highly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Frank Sanchez. I love that boy. But, but I just hope Frank Sanchez doesn't become the new Luis Ortiz. Or what was the other Cuban that amounted to nothing? Got knocked out by Povetkin in a fight I knew was going to get knocked out. And not Frank Sanchez. There's another guy, Cuban guy. Bryant Jennings beat him. And Adam Booth was in the corner. And Adam Booth said to the guy, when, when Jennings was beating him up and, and winning uh, was ahead on the scorecards and was like pulling away on the scorecards, Adam Booth was telling him, relax, relax. He was in, uh, uh, he used to fight training Ireland. You know him. Not Gomez. Is it Gomez? So I can't remember the Cuban guy's name again. The last time we discussed AJ, he was meeting with the head of payments of Matchroom to Zone for the first time. The people who signed the checks for the first time, bruv. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That's why Deontay Wilder looks at Joshua as a slave. And they don't want Wilder anywhere near Joshua because Wilder will tell Joshua, trying to link, trying to clue him up. Wilder's a good brother. Wilder says it as it is. And they don't like him for that. They don't like him for that. But they can't touch Wilder because he's got Shelly Finkel there. Shelly Finkel's a bad man. That's why. Can't come and talk all that stuff to Shelly Finkel. Shelly Finkel's a bad man as far as I'm concerned. So that's why I see it. I know Demore isn't the same caliber as most there, but but quite like the way he spoke respect. <laughs> My friend, is this a speaking competition or is this a boxing match? I don't give a damn how they speak anymore because I've heard a lot of people speak a lot of stuff and I've tuned in for the fight and they've ended up cuddling one another. Wada actually personally flew over in an attempt to meet AJ alone and he even wished him well at, at his at the DS. Something going on behind the scenes, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I told you already. Wilder's probably coming to talk to what to, to Joshua. Give him give him a heads up. Raise those vibrations. Don't be a dummy. Don't be a slave. Educate the brother. Brother's lost. That and Wilder sees that. And while was pushing for Wilder versus Joshua, Wilder's got other things on his mind for Joshua. That's why I see it. That's the vibes I'm seeing, and that's the vibes the Wilder's giving off. That's what I think, you know. So I don't, I, I've, I've seen them, I've seen their moves before where people don't want you talking to certain people today. With everything you say, you see them right standing next to that person. That person, they think, oh, he's, he's a bit of a live wire. Let's, let's get close to him. Remember when Mayweather came to Pacquiao's hotel alone to try to talk to him about the fight? Next thing you know, the fight happens and Pacquiao becomes a free agent. Hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And Wilder's got Shelly Finkel there. Like I said, Shelly Finkel's a bad man. That's why. That's why I see it. Do you understand? So, and Wilder's no fool. Wilder's no fool. When all that stuff was going on with Fury and the court case, remember? And people like Hearn were saying, oh, yeah, the fight's going to go ahead. Who do you think was running the show behind the scenes? Shelly Finkel. Man's a bad man. Wilder's got tons of money, 5 million U USD for each of those title defences. Yeah, don't worry about who was talking there, man. They're just talking, just talking for talking's sake. The real ones know. So, um, again, I was just delighted to see Frank Warren 
I call that the day of recognising. That was the day of recognising the Frankie boys on top. All these people, all these matchroom people that were saying, oh, he's the best promoter. Where are they now? Where are you now about Eddie Hearn? And I said, we come and say, Eddie, think about Eddie Hearn. Frank's the boy. I've always backed Frank. Always backed Frank. Frank's a good horse. Frank's a good horse. Can can Eddie top that? That's what you're talking, Eddie. Can Eddie top that? Can Eddie get Frank in a room now and put Frank at the back of the picture and him be at the front of the picture? Can Eddie do that? Can Eddie top this show? Can he do that? Can he do that? I thought I want to know. And AJ said, Uncaris uncharacteristically tense towards Wada, who is not fighting. Did Hearn tell him to be aware of Deontay Wada, putting salt in the soup to ruin the taste? And that's typical stuff in it. You've got to understand the mentality of these people. Probably. Or understand the fact that the day of reckoning, when Joshua's looking at Wada, he's like, this is the one, this is the, this is the one that could knock me out flat. Remember, we just look at history. History tells us that the, uh, Anthony Joshua was scared of Andy Ruiz knocking him out. That's why he got a sports psychologist in. That was Andy Ruiz. God, he was wearing a sleep ring because he was having sleepless nights going into the Usyk 2 rematch. So you tell me now, you're not going to be terrified of Deontay Wilder. Come on. Come on. Wilder was being nice because he wants to fight. Mm. Hey, Wilder's just a nice dude. Have you thought about that? Can't remember Eddie putting on a big show. Not in recent memory, that's for sure. No, got a big show coming up. Uh, Katie Taylor versus Chantel Cameron. You know, I'm being facetious there, right? Mike Tyson separates you from your senses, but Deontay and it turns the lights off at the mains. <laughs> yeah, so I don't. I just, I just think, just I would at the moment give up on Joshua versus Wilder, and put all our energy into Wilder versus Parker. But that's a dangerous fight. I don't care what anybody tells me. That's a dangerous fight. Um, and uh, unless J Parker's been used as a sacrifice, and then um, Joshua. Versus Wallin. Wada wants his big excellency Turkish Elche money. Yeah, that's it. When you see that kind of money going around, it's the kind of money that, you know, Al Heyman's rich. And then this guy's wealthy, you know. And with the collapse of Showtime, with the collapse of Showtime, and probably from Showtime, the PBC because you can't get the dates on TV unless they don't get a TV deal. But I did hear a rumor. I did hear a story that Netflix is going to start investing in boxing. Netflix. So if Netflix and PBC could do a deal together, that could be interesting. Netflix in boxing. Check that one out. So, yeah, um, I hope you enjoy these videos. I hope you enjoy the lives. I will stop soon because there's not much more I need to talk about. Is there anything else you think I'm missing or I need to talk about? I've talked about Hearn and Warren. I've talked about Wilder and uh, Wilder, Joshua, Wilder, Wilder, Wilder and, and Parker, Joshua and Walling. Danny Dubois is going to get smashed by the, uh, Jerome Miller. Um, what else? Taylor says, damn, Ingram, can you announce your lives? I do. T, what I want you all to do now. Make sure you go to the bell and make sure you click on the bell all. You might have got it personalized. Click all. Let me see if I can do this for you. Let me see if I can. Yeah. What about the 12 round, the three minutes in women title fights, Serena fight? That's a good sign. No. Not into women's boxing, but I think that's what they need. Yeah, three minutes of boxing, great. I agreed, totally. There's nothing more to say about that, to be honest. 
Netflix and boxing, please. God, don't let them bring porn into boxing. I know Netflix tactics. <laughs> Miller is AJ's new daddy. Uh, yeah. As I said before, I'm calling before anybody else says it. I'm calling Big Baby Miller the Riddick Bow of this era. Riddick Bow. Not so much the boxing ability, but the character and personality. A bit that must that must be that must but that must be the first it's happened, Ingram. Sign of the times. Yeah, most probably. Most probably. AJ, I'm your landlord. I see you brought your mum again, bruv. <laughs> That's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, AJ. I I don't. And the fact is, we've been, listen, I'm going to say one more statement. AJ is trying to find a trainer that's going to get him not spark out. That's all it is. AJ is trying to find a trainer who's going to get him not spark out, like rendered unconscious, like can't get up. Yep. And you know how that's going to happen? I'll tell you how it's going to happen. I'll give you an insight. You see the media? You see the media talking about AJ and his old form and AJ not being aggressive and AJ uh, not being the destroyer. Well, you know, you got, you know, you got the, the brains of Britain and, and one of the world's greatest trainers in Ben Davidson. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of fighters stay with him. Uh, Devin Haney, Tyson Fury. Um, who else was with him has left him? few fighters have been with uh, Ben Davidson, trained with him a fight or two and gone. Listen to this. There's no doubt in my mind that Ben is going to want to put his ego out there and make uh, AJ into some monster. Yeah, And that's the night he gets knocked out. Wait and see. Because AJ is going to want to try and come out uh, being aggressive like he was back in the day. But what you got to understand is Back in the day, you were fighting bums. Now you're fighting people legit that's going to punch you in your mouth and look to render you unconscious. You can't just be walking there trying to knock people out like that anymore. Even Mike Tyson, the great Mike Tyson, met his levels where guys he couldn't knock out anymore. He was going 10 and 12 rounds for it. It happens. So this nonsense about it's just absolute rubbish from the media who don't, the media are accountable for nothing and nobody. They're not accountable for what they say. They're not accountable for what they do. They're not accountable for the damage that is done, right? When the media was saying that Francis Ngannou can't box, is this, is that, is the other, the same media now turn around saying Francis is in the top 10 and one of the best heavyweights in the world. The media are unaccountable and do not pay them any of mind. But now AJ is falling into the trap of saying form. Oh, I'm going to get back to my best form. Your best form means that you're going to go out there and be aggressive. We'll go do that against a counter punch like Wally and see what happens to you. Remember what I said, people, about AJ and this and this Ben Davidson bullshit. It's bullshit. That's all it is. It's bullshit. He's got no faith in himself. He's got no faith in his trainers. That's what it is. He's dating and tottering. Adam Smith. <laughs> In, if you retired to two fights at Usyk, two-way rematch clause takes at 2024 for the Gypsy King. Yep, I'm sure he'll retire if he wins the title, though. Uh, I've heard AJ went to Ben Davison for camp. Yep, mentally. Ben Davison had AJ rolling over rolling over the left hook. Jesus. Boxer's eyes, Ben. That's the best name for someone. I think it was Porky that christened him that, and it stuck. <laughs> Joshua was scared to take questions from Dev. He was so rude. Yeah, but you know Dev. 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 No disrespect to him, right? Love what Dev does. Dev's a shit stirrer. He is a shit stirrer. Dev, Dev is what you call that guy in the playground that wants to get two of the best fighters in school to fight. And you'll go to one guy and say, ah, do you know what he said about your mum? He said your mum's this. Then he goes and runs to the other guy and says, do you know what he said? He said, this is about your mum. And it's terrible. And then what happens is two people come together in the middle of the program. So you say, what about my mum? Yeah, but you said this about my mum. What, 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 what? You got fight. 
And Dev's like, yeah, with the camera going. <laughs> and then when they both get into detention, <laughs> Dev's nowhere to be seen because Dev's doing his own work. That's what Dev Sani is. Shit stirrer. That's what it is. But it's a good thing for boxing. It's a good thing for boxing, yeah? Shit stirrer. That's what it is. Call it for what it is. D d call it for what it is. Call it for what it is. Because you know, the reason why Joshua was scared of Dev asking questions because Dev would have turned the floor and said, well, Mr. Wilder, Mr. Joshua, and then tensions would boil over. We don't want that. We certainly don't want that. Or anyone. AJ's like this. And mentally, he's frail. You don't want Wilder coming out. You don't want... The, we, that was Deontay Wilder, by the way. At the table, we, want, we don't want the bronze bomber coming out. Because then... <laughs> Dev, I would like, we would be remiss if we didn't. I proceed to ask, to ask all the questions that everyone is thinking about, but doesn't want to ask. <laughs> uh, Mike Perez, that's the guy, Mike Perez. So we won't want Frank, Frank Sanchez to end up like Mike Perez or Luis Ortiz, because both of those guys were good fighters. Both of those guys never became world champions. That is what we don't want Frank Sanchez to be. Mike Perez, Cuban Southpaw, Spa Tyson Fury in Ireland. There you go. That's it. And what and what happened with what happened with Sanchez? Um uh, this guy, Perez. Where's Mike Perez today? He got flattened by Povetkin in a fight. If you look, I'm just saying, checkers on the ring that night. You can look into that yourself. Perez was going to get flat. Anybody who went in the ring that night against uh, Povetkin was going to get flattened. Perez was the guy that got flattened that night. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for me. I don't think I've got anything else to say. But uh, AJ is receptive enough to believe what the media want and fall into the trap. Of being overly aggressive, counterpunched, and knocked out. Thank you for the wee show. Got me through the afternoon shift, only four hours to go. Well, if you want the four hours to go, go and have a look at my um, the start of my Man United team. Let me know what you think of that. And let me know if you want me to do a Celtic team. If you want me to do a Celtic team, I will do a Celtic team for you to get through your shifts. Right. But bear in mind, I'm in Nigeria, and unlike in England, we have 24 hour light here. We get light when they send it. If they don't send it, you can be in darkness. Yeah. So we're on a strike at the moment, which means the schools, there's no schools. Schools are closed. Supposedly we're on a strike and we've got no light, but we've got light at the moment. So things are so unstable. You never know. But also, please go and check out my uh, sports videos, my cricket videos, That's which I'm doing in, in Nigeria. Yeah, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Enjoy. Have fun. And uh, Frankie boy. You did a Celtic rebuild two years ago, if I mind, right? I could do another Celtic, but this will be FC24. Just to say FC24 is amazing because it's like you get the graphics of FIFA, but then you get, you manage, you don't actually play the game. So, yeah, it's brilliant. So if you want me to do an, uh, a Celtic, I will do a Celtic for you. I'm doing a Man United at the moment. It's getting a little bit of interest. I could do, I could actually start a Celtic for you today, if you like. Actually, I might do a Celtic today for you and just freeze my Man United just to do a Celtic one for you. All right? How does that sound? Right, let me get out of here. Um, is there any stipulations you want for my Celtic team? Do you want me to do free transfers only, realistic transfers? What do you want me to do? Let me know in the comment section in the video and I, I'll jump on my Celtic team as well. All right, I'll do it today. I'll start off for you today after this live. Right. Thank you all so much. Much love to you. Thank you for watching BWT and Sports as always. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, leave your comments. Go to the notification bell and click all. Do not click personalize, click all so you know when I'm next live. Take care. <laughs>